Hi guys, I'm Comrade Kane and welcome to my channel. Have you ever wondered where those beautiful natural wonders are in real life? Take a ride on Google Earth to compare the wonders and rank them on a scale from fabulous to disappointing. I put all the natural wonders of the Civilization VI gathering storm onto a Google Earth map as a project. I'm going to put the link in the description so you feel free to click on it and actually go through it yourself. Works best on the desktop though. But you can download an app and watch it on your phone as well. So the first wonder on the list is Chocolate Hills. There are about 1300 Chocolate Hills on the Philippine island of Bohol. They say geologically perhaps the hills were formed from the eroded marine limestone or coral reefs pushing upwards because of tectonic shifts. The name itself comes from the visual look the hills get in the dry season resembling chocolate candy. Let's look at Civilization VI. Four tile natural wonder. It provides plus one food, plus two production and plus one science. This wonder has an ideal shape for a national park. Even though the yields are not great, it's still impressive enough to work early in the game to get that science going. Add preserved district with groves and sanctuaries to supercharge these yields. Pretty decent wonder. Looks cool. So I rate it as not too shabby. I wish it was as magical in real life as in the game. So now let's see what it looks like on the ground level. Flying onto the street view. Oh. Not as impressive on the on the ground level. Here's a local. Oh, and here is a dude taking the shower outdoors. That is certainly the conditions are a little different on the ground here. I would say real life rating would be a step lower for the chocolate hills. Considering I, you can't even see them from here from here. On the local side but you know what it's still exotic for me so i am going to keep it as not too shabby in real life next one there is the cliffs of dover the white cliffs of dover they're in england on the coast of the english channel the geological composition is of chalk streaked with black flint the legend says that you can actually see them from france on a clear day in Civilization VI, the Cliffs of Dover is one of the two wonders in the game that provide plus four appeal to the neighboring tiles as opposed to just plus two. So again, possible national park and preserve district probably? I think the early game yields a pretty diesel, considering the amount of culture and gold you get. It's not bad at all. Plus three each. However, you can't improve the tiles or build anything on them. And the fact that it's just two tiles makes me lean towards a rating of uh, not impressed, to be honest. Well, I guess uh, you can't see the cliffs of Dover from the coast, right? You have to be on the water. Um, the one thing that I wanted to point out, though, is that uh, there is a Dover castle that contains Roman era lighthouses. I believe it's somewhere here. Naturally, the Romans figured out that this was the narrowest part of the English Channel, right? Holy crap, the traffic. I'm going to rank this wonder as not impressed. The Crater Lake. It's a 7,700-year-old volcanic lake located in the Pacific side of the United States. It is the deepest lake in the U.S. at about 2,000 feet or 600 meters. It's absolutely gorgeous. As is the rest of the Pacific nor Northwest, to be honest. It's a one-tile natural wonder that appears as a lake and provides plus five faith and plus one science and freshwater. It makes it a cool wonder because you can settle the city right next to it and collect a crazy faith yield to get Pantheon fast. Obviously, national parks are easy to build around it as well. I would rate it as not too shabby. You know what? 
campsites must be absolutely amazing with uh, hiking and biking and fishing. I love it. I love it. I mean, this area is just amazing to me to begin with. Uh, I love nature. I love outdoors. And even though as a civilization rating, it would be not too shabby in real life. I mean, this color is probably not the real color. <laughs> but in real life, I mean, look at this thing. That's amazing. It's fabulous. I'm going to rate it. It's fabulous in real life. Absolutely breathtaking. Next one is Dead Sea. It is known to the Hebrews of antiquity as the Sea of Salt and the Arabs as the Sea of Death. Both appropriate names. It's a salt lake located on the border of Jordan and Israel. The area around it has the lowest land elevation. And it's about 30 by 9 miles, so it's a long, good-sized lake. Hence, it's a two-tile natural wonder in Civ. It is known as the world world's earliest health resort due to its medicinal qualities of salt in it. In Civilization VI, it appears as a lake and provides plus two faith and plus two culture, and units heal completely if they heal for one turn adjacent to the Dead Sea Wonder. Does not provide fresh water, however. Maybe you could work the tiles to get the early pantheon early, but the food is important to grow your city, so I'm not sure how useful the yield tiles are at all. The unit healing is impressive, but then how often do you get it in the era of a military conflict? And I'm talking CF6, not real life. So I give it a rating of not impressed. And not to start anything, but let's see whose side is actually better. Here's Israeli. I mean, looks okay. I mean, let's see what if we can see it on the ground level. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, not super fancy. I guess you can't, you can't lounge at the coast. You have to use a chair, usually a plastic chair. Uh, wow, it looks like they're still building it out. Okay, what about Jordan co Coast? Jordan side, is that any better? Pretty uh, rustic setup and hangout. Uh, definitely need shoes for this type of beach. Uh, I wish the quality of the pictures was better, but hey, at least you got a hum hammock. Overall, I'm not gonna lie, not impressed at all. I would even say in real life, Dead Sea is disappointing. Delicate Arch. It is located in the United States. It is a sandstone arch, as tall as a six story building. That's pretty impressive. I thought it would be smaller than that. But both gravity and winds will eventually lead it to the arch's collapse. Evidently, the area used to be the bottom of the sea millions of years ago and eroded over the years. And it's the iron oxide that gives the rocks a red color. One tile impassable natural wonder provides plus two faith and plus one gold to the adjacent tiles. The problem is that this is a desert wonder and you can't really work those tiles without Petra, Preserve or a Nazca Lines improvement. I don't see how it could be useful at the early stages of the game unless it's on the border of grasslands and making those tiles a little bit better. I would rank it disappointing. In real life though, it's a completely different story. This is sort of a Martian type of looking landscape because of the iron oxide that gives it the red color. It's really amazing. I mean, I was lucky enough to visit Arizona's Red Rocks Park and I was so impressed by the uniqueness of the landscape and the visuals. I mean, it's a three mile round trip here, hike in, in like a hundred degree weather, climbing like 480 feet. It could be challenging for some of us, but listen, I, in real life, I'm ranking this wonder as fabulous. The Eye of the Sahara is located in the Sahara Desert of Mauritania in Africa. 
It is nearly impossible to see the Eye of Sahara from the ground level, but rather out of an airplane window or through a satellite imagery. It certainly looks like a giant eye about 30 miles across. One can only assume that's how it got its name. Eye of Sahara is a three-tile passable natural wonder in Civilization VI that appears on desert tiles. Each wonder tiles provides two production and one science. With a further one production and three science, once the game reaches the atomic era, it is another desert wonder that cannot do without the upgrades like Petra and Nazca lines or Preserve District. So it, it is hardly attractive to work early in the game, so I would rank it disappointing in Civ 6. In real life, though, this thing is quite mysterious. The origin theory is that it, it is either a geological structure of molten rock shaped by wind and water, or a meteorite impact crater, or, my personal favorite, a remains of the lost city of Atlantis, as described by Plato. On top of it, our beloved city-state at Chinggeti is only 140 miles southwest of the eye. What? Right? So considering all of that, I am ranking it as mysteriously fabulous in real life. This wonder is located in the beautiful island of Iceland. The Vikings are coming. Eyjafjallajökull Jokl is an Icelandic compound word that roughly translates as island mountain glacier that I cannot pronounce for the hell of it. Though the volcano has been around and active for over a millennia, ooh, it became famous in 2010 when its minor eruption halted air traffic in Europe for nearly a week and the Americans couldn't travel to Europe either. So that kind of sucked. Eyjafjallajökull is a two-tile impassable natural wonder and may be found on tundra or snow in Civilization VI. Its tiles provide plus one culture, plus two food to the adjacent tiles. It is considered a volcano and on eruption it gives medium yields to most likely and most likely damages buildings and districts. So if we don't build any improvements or districts on the tiles around it, then it's a great wonder in the sense that of yields output that just keeps on giving. The culture and food from Eyjafjallajökull Yat Yoktl early in the game is just amazing. So in Civ 6, I'll rank it as not too shabby. Volcanoes are awesome and get fabulous ranking in real life by default. That's just enough said. Plus, it's an Iceland, which makes a name for itself from time to time, just like with their football story in 2016 Euros. Props to you guys. So, fabulous rank. Alright guys, this concludes episode 1 of the Natural Wonder Ranking by Comrade Kane. Special thanks to Civilizovany Grok YouTuber for inspiring this video. I hope you enjoyed this. If you like it, if you comment, I'm gonna do episode 2 and 3 for the rest of the wonders. Thank you and I'll see you guys next time. Appreciate all the love.